So is this gonna be like a sunset? I don't even know what we're going for. Mine's prettier, how about that? Hi guys, my name is Borodante, and welcome to Vermilion VR. It's probably called just Vermilion. It's a VR app for painting like Bob Ross. I'm pretty sure that was their concept when they decided to create it. So let's check it out after a quick word from this channel sponsor, Wang Fox. And their new course called Process and Tips on Creating Illustrations for Light Novel. This is a massive course of 21 hours aimed at the beginners, and your lecturer Dmitry Padubny, who's a very passionate illustrator and who's been working in the field for four years, will cover the full journey that starts with a raw sketch and ends up being a beautifully rendered illustration with two gloriously thick characters and very realistic and polished rendering. The course is truly made with love, and Dmitri really shares a lot of his knowledge and little and big tips, so I can definitely recommend checking it out. You can get full access to this course for $39 with $10 extra discount code. So find the affiliate link and the code in the video description. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is the first time I see this app actually standing up. Before that, I only tried it sitting down. So yeah, this is pretty much what things look like. Everything needs to be higher now. Man, all of it, like, you can adjust everything, the height and position of all the stands. Feels pretty realistic. I, I, I kind of feel anxious that it's gonna trip over, but it never will. So yeah, the palette, it can uh, sit on the stand like this, or I can grab it and use it. Now, I don't know much about it, I only tried it a little bit today just to make sure it works and all that, so... Let's see if I can actually uh, paint something, like Mr. Ross over here. Alright. So yeah, this is actually pretty cool, they immediately have Bob Ross playing on YouTube for you in this little floating browser. You can make it like of a different size and everything and literally follow his tutorials and everything. So, I was thinking this was like a quick app, pretty basic functionality or something, like just make sure that the brush engine works and everything, and then just release it. But not at all. It's actually a lot of fun. There's so much stuff you, you do in here. Uh, okay, mister, Let, let's do your thing. Oh no, he has the white coating already. What am I supposed to do with that? So yeah, I'm not sure if I'll be able to make anything decent today. I just wanted to give it a try at the experience. The whole thing really feels awesome. Okay, I accidentally got some rat into it, but apparently he's also doing it. We're actually using the same brushes, I, I, I wasn't paying attention. Okay, taking a lot more red. So here's like going pure red, right? I should reset my, my thangs. Okay, hold up. You're going too fast. Man, I feel as much of a loser as I did in that 100,000 subscribers video when I was trying to paint with the real paint and everything. It's as confusing and weird, which is a pretty good sign, obviously. So is this gonna be like a sunset? I don't even know what we're going for. Mine's prettier, how about that? I like my flamey colors. What are you doing there? I don't have those colors. I need to switch to like a more rich palette. Hold up. Palette? And there's like this version. I guess this is the Bob Ross collection of colors. I think I should be listening to what he's saying, but I'm not gonna. Because I decided to remove my headphones <laughs> from VR for the recording. And now I can't really make it playing too loud. Okay, it's kind of violet in his thing. What is he going about? Uh, maybe a bit blue? It's kind of cold, but also generally dirty, so I'm gonna add some poop. And maybe a little bit of that one, too. That's still the same brush. Okay, but I feel like my virtual version of it 
It's just brown. What's up with that? Yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit more of the pale blue. Still haven't cleaned the brush. There we go. <laughs> oh yeah. And you totally redecorate the studio. There you go. Now at home, I suggest that that, you that you has to do something. I know. So I'll dilute it a little bit, or a lot, I don't know, and just smear the colors around, I guess that's the point. So yeah, there are two versions for how your hand behaves in, in, in the app. If I press a button, it says like, I don't know if you guys can see this actually, but it says press V to disable hand stabilizer. So when I'm painting, it's much smoother, but I'm, I'm gonna just let it flow without that. Okay, his stuff is a lot more colorful. I'm gonna turn on subtitles, maybe I'll be able to catch something. One thing I noticed comparing to like reality or at least the way Bob Ross is working, like his paint, like on dry, it would run out faster. This one just keeps going, it's kind of weird, you know? It kind of dries out, but a lot longer than what a real brush would, I think. I'm not sure, but that's what I feel about it. And, okay, this is a, this is a different brush he's having. I would say it's like this one. Also, there's undo, but I'm not gonna be using it. It shouldn't be here. What is this? Undo in such an app? Are we doing... Oh, look, it's pretty close. <laughs> yeah, but another problem, like one thing, it runs out very slowly, like a lot of the paint keeps going. But then if you paint on the already wet paint, it will blend with it really fast. Even if I'm like touching a little bit. Although right now it's kind of working out. I see the soft... What are we doing? Oh, it's like the horizon line of some kind of a forest, I guess? I don't know. So yeah, I'm not hearing it too much, but like if I pause the video, or probably you guys already heard it, but there's a lot of sounds in this game, actually. I keep calling it game. It's an app, I guess. I haven't tried exporting anything yet or whatever, but I think it, it deserves to be called an app, right? But uh, thing is, like, there's so much sounds, like this stuff. This is going, like, I'm hearing it a little bit now. And yeah, like, all the stuff. I think the brush is also making sounds a little bit and everything. Oh, you see, like, diluted paint now mixing around with everything else. Nice. You can work in a completely different technique with this delusion, I think. It would work pretty cool. So yeah, one thing that I was actually surprised about is that while it's a VR app and, uh, you know, it has all kinds of stuff going on, it also has a really cool engine of, like, blending colors. It actually, you can legit get a proper, proper green by mixing yellow and blue, which is something that's pretty rare in apps, actually. I'm even gonna use like this deep blue. And if I mix them around, you see, it's legit, like you never see this going on in, uh, in any painting app. Well, unless they specifically made sure that their color model actually supports it. Also, you never see the paint actually eating away from the palette material, like, what's up? These are holes instead of being actual, like, bumps of paint. But yeah, this thing works pretty cool. Also, what's awesome, like, there are no tubes of paint. That's one thing that's kind of missing in here, um, in terms of, you know, being a realistic simulator of painting and whatever. And these uh, little spots of color on the palette, they're kind of like infinite sources of your paint. Like, not really, you can easily kill white, and now I don't have white at all, but what you can do is you can reset your palette very easily. And then you also have this little extra palette. Apparently, it's for diluting paint, pretty much. So you have this diluting material in here, and then you can mix colors around with it, I guess. Like, it seems like it's just not reacting much to everything. I'm like five-year-olds whenever it comes to, like, 
realistic materials and this thing is uncomfortably too close to that. I think I want my easel to be a bit higher actually. So yeah, you can make the canvas bigger, I wonder. Oh cool, you can legit make your painting bigger at any point. Well that's fun. Okay, keep going. Pretty much we're going about the same. It's hard to tell whose painting you're looking at, Bob Ross or mine. It's like, okay, I'm gonna mix these three and hope for the best. He's already going with something green. So yeah, also another thing like a mechanics in this app actually, if you press the brush really like strongly at the palette, you collect a lot more paint and it's like a deeper load of paint on it. And that's where you can leave these big brush spots with a lot of imp impasto effect on them. So there's like a big load of it. And I think it keeps its own color for a longer this way. It's really weird how you have to constantly clean your brush before you pick colors again. Because it gets, like, it's wet on wet, it gets dirty from, like, these yellow colors of whatever's already there. So I have to constantly clean it and then make sure I load a lot of color in there to keep going again. So yeah, one thing I was always, like, you know, pessimistic about the painting, like actual painting with uh, with a brush, all like standing up, holding all your stuff in air and like not touching anything and just doing this. It's all floating around and you're not actually touching the canvas. You don't feel the canvas all that much. So it kind of works good in VR because in VR that's like the main problem that you can't actually touch anything like it's doing a great job giving me a lot of haptic feedback like whenever I'm touching the canvas I'm feeling like very sharp vibration in my controller so that's a really good touch that's important to have as well as having all the sounds so pretty much all the VR apps always have a lot of sounds in them because it's important for immersion and actually feeling like things are really going on so yeah, I'm feeling like it's like working pretty well, especially whenever tracking is working decently, because sometimes it's really shaking around right now, I don't know why. Maybe because of the way I set up the lights in here, it's like shooting at me. Yeah, that's the sound of hitting the canvas from the side. There's a lot of cool sounds. Someone was really inspired about this app. I was at first kind of a little bit maybe pissed off at this app a little bit because it was having a pretty aggressive marketing on Reddit going on like uh, posting over and over again, kind of pretending like it's just someone excited about the app and not the <laughs> developers or whoever that would be. But you know what, like it's totally deserved. This is a really cool app and it's not expensive at all too. Like it's really awesome. I feel great about like spreading the word about it and everything. I think it's definitely worth it. And obviously this is not sponsored by Vermilion. Okay, I'm obviously painting some kind of war in here. I don't know, but I'm kind of liking it <laughs> more than whatever Bob is having there. I, I'm not sure. If I want that, looks like some kind of a trippy Windows 95 background. Also, I don't know, this is one thing that I really can't hear right now, but I remember the first time I was trying it, there was the sound of thunder going on from like the whatever's going on in the, in the background and the, behind the windows, even though it doesn't really look like it's um, any kind of storm going on. So what's going on in here? I want to add more of this hot pink. Ooh, that, that looks gross. How did I touch green? Yeah, this is, this is not realistic. Grab, grab that pink, put it right over here. I'll mix in a little bit of red too. Let's go that, that direction. Whoa, that's cool looking. Reflective moist paint on the, on the brush. Also, by the way, only from that side that I was touching, like that angle. Really precise work. Really cool the way it works. See, another cool thing about it is that I can press a button and readjust the brush in my hand so it would be holding it differently, which is 
really important and I've never seen that before. Although that's actually not true. It's just this is the first one that kind of works in the realistic context. That's why it feels pretty cool. Whoa, that's thick. I loaded a lot of paint on this brush. Oh, that's thick. That's so thick. See, it really feels weird spending so much time on like cleaning and making sure you really like load a lot of that stuff in. So is it like really reacting to, you know, the um, exactly the angle at which I'm touching the canvas? So yeah, like it's perfectly three-dimensional brush. So cool, like I'm so not limited to one shape of the brush whenever I'm touching. Touching. It's so different every time because it's actually like solving it depending on the angle of the brush and everything. Like Photoshop had that forever. <laughs> At least, what, seven years ago they added three-dimensional bristly brushes, which was like a cool tech but pretty much no one ever uses it since then. And in here, obviously, it's naturally working just right for you. Man, I'm so confused, like, making this whole paint work around is kind of confusing. And actually, not just because I'm, like, confused about realistic paint and everything, it's mostly because it actually doesn't work super realistically in terms of if I make it like this right now, like, I removed a huge volume of paint from the canvas. And like, where did it go? If I'm touching somewhere else, like I have lost that volume already. I'm only erasing volume and it literally disappears. So you can't really, you know, load a lot of paint on the canvas and then really push it around and see some kind of cool impasto going crazy, you know? It's not like that. It's more like an effect and also it changes the way the paint actually blends with whatever is going on on the canvas. Meaning if I load a lot, hopefully I did just now, and I'll make a mark. You see it's really thick and only then when I do smearing in one place, uh, it starts blending with it. But if I quickly just grab some paint like this, and I make a mark, it's blending together immediately. So it's a lot less aggressive of a thing, which makes sense if you grab a lot of like huge layer of paint, makes sense that it will actually cover the canvas with its own color. <sighs> so what's interesting, I can literally grab some kind of color on the canvas like this. Now I kind of have it and I'll put it in here and now I have like an infinity of this color. You don't really run out of this paint while you're on the palette. Man, it's so like frustrating to me. <laughs> so not used to like the paint runs out so fast. Like when everything's like wet, like I, I can like, <laughs> it immediately loses its own color so quickly. And that's it, like, I really want to add a lot of, like, darker colors and it's just not gonna do it. Going back to this brush, maybe this one lets you have more of that. Because, as I mentioned, whenever the canvas is actually dry, like, when it's blank, that's where you can push that one color all over the canvas, you never run out of it. But in here, like, the blending is really aggressive. Oh yeah, I remember, they actually mentioned it. As I was saying it, I remembered it. So there's this mop. Is it gonna actually erase? Yeah, it's gonna erase the canvas, never mind. Uh, maybe like with this thing. So what it does, it literally removes, also messes everything up though, but generally it removes the volume, like all these, uh, all the thickness, thickness from the paint. And presumably this is supposed to help me with like, not blending colors too much with the new brush strokes. But I'm really not sure it's gonna work because like these brush strokes at the bottom, they were never thick in the first place and I'm blending with them like crazy. So is this gonna be better? No, like immediately, I already blended with them. Again, like same as I mentioned in Corel Painter and their awesome new 
well, relatively new thick paint brush engine, thick paint layers. It's all really cool, but one mechanics that is missing is letting the paint dry. Like, can I press some kind of button or grab like a fan and blow all over it so it would get like, I waited a day or two now it's dry let me paint on top of it without blending just at all i don't know if it's like a thing or is it just my digital ass not knowing what i'm talking about but it seems like it's a reasonable thing to have and the paint in any digital that's a cool chair i don't know if you guys can see it it's probably out of focus to you as well but that's a cool chair mm, getting some nice brush strokes down cool a lot of black landed on this canvas now. Like, why is it so so friendly with that now? <laughs> I'm not sure. Like, yeah, I dried it up, but it was still blending around a lot before. Okay, Bob, do you have any more ideas? Okay, yeah, let's add some trees. But before that, I think I need at least one, like, hill. Let it be green like this. Ugh. Is that a professional pose for a traditional artist? Why did I decide to put the hill over here? Ugh. There we go. So I can just make it clean like this, almost. So you can really just, wherever you touch it, that's where it becomes clean or something. So it's all really angle dependent and everything. So this way I get to like push the colors around a little bit and dry them up as well, like without making a huge mess. I kind of want to clean this mop now too. It all feels really nasty. Traditional painting is all nasty, like, come on. This is disgusting. Feeling like some kind of psychopath just pushing dirt all over the place, really gross. Like, who told you that was, like, a good thing? This is insanity. You're actually in a hospital. There you go, I'm getting a hang of it a little bit. I really like the... Like, you learn a little bit the tools that you can be using, you know? Uh, pushing the paint around with a, like, clean brush is a big deal. I also really like this brush usually in any app it's usually really cool especially if you have like tilt support and this is like a completely next level of a tilt support okay just a little bit of this oh this is so cool it's reacting with its bristles on the movement it feels so real this is like the best stuff so yeah this brush is really messy like it's bristles are really messy but it actually has some of the brushes not all of them you can press and switch between the messy and the more of a consistent bristles i think i'll have more use of the consistent ones this time one thing that i'm really not used to is actually respecting the bristles of the brush like i think it makes a lot of sense in this app to you know not paint like this <laughs> like against the bristles like that you know messing them up i mean it's not the first app to have that but usually you still don't care you know <laughs> you just don't care this is so weird at least it's super easy to clean the brush in here this is probably such a huge difference even getting to this piece of trash of a result would take me like two hours probably and it's only been like less than one hour i hope oh it's not almost not doing anything it's too dry what if i uh dilute my brush a little bit will that make something happen see i'm wondering like the resolution is also pretty insane like who coded this this is so cool <laughs> like while you're also having all of this going on and, you know, tracking happening at least at 90 frames per second, I think. This is pretty epic. Like, I don't know, I can't wait to see, like, if I get to, like, export 2K, 4K, 8K. So, this canvas is, like, 8K. 
Really? Gallery neutral studio fo- oh. Neutral is like probably just the pixels of the picture being exported and studio photo and gallery is like studio photo will be like a picture from the studio and and the gallery is probably it hanging on a white wall somewhere this really reminds me of that app from the creators of paintstorm studio that app that was also super like um realistic in this regard but it was just an interface like a flat flat app i wonder if they have anything to do with this app because because why not that's all i know <laughs> yeah so this is literally a browser by the way so you can go anywhere you want so yeah let's do those trees like that what kind of brush is that again this uh, thick round one right i think it is so like this guy also bob's brush i think it's like bigger can I change sizes of these brushes? I wonder. Because it makes sense. Like, all of these brushes are brushes of different types. But they also come in different sizes. What I can do is actually I can uh, make the canvas smaller for, for a while. And the brush will remain of this size. And the paint is glossy. You don't see the color well at certain angles. Oh my god, I can grab it literally by the bristles. Okay, um, it really depends, like, it's a big of a deal of, like, how loaded and how dry the brush is. Like, I feel like I need to make it dry now, maybe? I don't know, it's just blobs. Everything I paint is just blobs here. Just like that, just like that. Happy little piles of trash. Well, how about that? Yeah, it's really interesting how in digital you sort of, you know, you need a color, you just pick it and put it on the canvas. You need to blend colors together, you just turn on blending and you blend them together. You want it to be more transparent, you just make, like, lower the opacity and then it's transparent. You want to add some texture, you turn on texture and you specifically set up how much you want it to be revealed in the brush strokes. In here, you need to control like how, how messed up the bristles are, how dry or thick the paint is, how diluted it is, and how exactly you're touching the canvas with it. And all of that will result in revealing a lot of texture, for instance, or something. It's really cool and interesting. And actually, it's, it feels super unobvious at first. But just after a little while, it becomes very intuitive. It's really interesting. I mean, obviously still, it's not even close to the nightmare of real painting. I would be just glazed with paint right now, all over the body. By the way, check out the merch, link in the description. This brush feels like it's like made of plastic. Oh my God, I can actually paint something more precise than just blobs with this brush. Real cool. Well, obviously you're taking it a bit of a different direction. Can't agree or disagree. Your direction is a forest. My direction is the end of days. Trunks, that's a good idea. I'm kind of doing a trunk, but also it can be a burned down village. Is this brush gonna work? Oh my god, I'm Bob Ross. This is a big deal. I don't know why I thought that I can totally paint it with these giant brushes. It really felt like they're like the main brushes. And all of this felt like, nah, this is not gonna work. I don't know why. I generally don't like like sharp brushes. <laughs> Overall, I usually create like in Photoshop, I create these round big brushes and then you just make them really small if you want to paint something small. But it's not the case in here, and these sharp brushes, they totally make sense. <laughs> like, oh my god, it makes sense. Okay, these are just spikes to torture someone, I guess. This is pretty fun. I'm liking it. Let's go with this one, the messy mode. Happy little nothing. It's so cool that you can... Not just turn around the brush, but turn it around in your hand in real time. 
you know, in Photoshop, you would usually have to go to settings to change it to just make the brush like initially vertical and then you tilt it or initially horizontal and then you tilt it. In here is just whatever this thing, grab it, whatever you want. Oh, this is so sexy. Like legit, even if you're like not a, an artist or anything, this is just one of the most precise and impressive experiences in VR right now, I think. This is just so cool. Look at that, look how real it feels. Incredible how, how precise the actual spots on the canvas after that are. So cool. This is way more fun than I expected it to be when I was downloading this. Um, maybe work on the clouds a little bit as well. Also, this is not finished, I feel. What about this brush? What is the difference of this one comparing to like this one or something? Feels like nothing special. Oh, it can be sharp like this or rounded. Hmm, I feel like this one is a little bit of the in between a big brush and a small brush. That in between stage. Mm hmm. Hmm. I just realized one thing I really wanted to do right now is grab the brush into my left hand real quick so I would be able to make the brush strokes to the left. Because in here, it's like, yeah, I can grab it kind of like this, but it feels unnatural to just go crazy like that. Obviously, you would just grab it in, an, in another hand. I'm not ambidextrous or anything. It's just sometimes it makes total sense to do that. And in the settings, when I opened this app for the first time, it just asked me if I'm right-handed or left-handed, and then everything was arranged this way. So yeah, being able to like, you know, maybe do this and uh, grab with the left hand to paint with the left hand, even like after that I would let go and it would return to the right hand or if it's necessary. I think that would be pretty cool, but generally just being able to freely switch tools and the palette as well, you know, put it on the right hand. I mean, you would have to flip it and that wouldn't work that great. <laughs> like, whatever, I'm not becoming left-handed all of a sudden. I'm just saying that it would be cool to be able to paint with the left hand at any point real quick for a little while. No strings attached. Take it or leave it. Oh yeah. Yeah, this brush is pretty cool for making these um, messy spots like that. This is such a trashy painting. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave it at that. This was a lot of fun, but I'm like exhausted. <laughs> okay, so I exported all three of them and for the sake of checking it out, this is what they look like, all three exports. Ugh. Whoa, that was a lot of fun, if you couldn't tell. I guess that'll be it. Tell me guys what you think about Vermilion. I think this is a lot of fun. I feel like they really went all in on it. Like it literally has everything it can possibly have in terms of just oil painting, obviously. Can actually produce a very high quality result if that 8K button really means it. So yeah, that's it. That's all I had to say. Really cool app, amazing engine and everything. Really works amazingly. Really feels like, I feel like I touched paint just now. It really has that feeling to it, which is amazing. So yeah, tell me guys what you think and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Man, one thing that I'm uh, pissed off about is that, as I mentioned before, I really like using virtual desktop app to connect the um, Oculus Quest 2 to desktop. And for some reason, with a couple of recent apps, it just doesn't work properly. Either it doesn't start the app at all, or it doesn't have the necessary controls or something. It would be really cool to make it work because in virtual desktop you have hand tracking, as I showed you in the, my previous VR video. And that means I would be able to like grab the brush, obviously not feeling it in my hand, but there wouldn't be actual things in my hand. You could just, you know, and basic functionality of things around you are actually based on just grabbing and moving and pushing and wiping <laughs> on the mop or on the canvas or on the palette. So you really don't need a lot of buttons. It could really use 
hand tracking. That would be really cool. I, I'll try to make it work with virtual desktop in the future. I think it would be really awesome.